In last video, we have created scroll to section animation in Flutter web as shown. However, the section title is not responsive on showing which section I am currently looking at. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to create such responsive animation as shown so that when you scroll through the screen, the app bar section title color changes responsively. Before we dive into the code, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. This tutorial code continues from the previous tutorial, which I will add the link to the last tutorial in the description below. So in order to achieve such responsive animation, we have to add four new variables. So basically, we need to add all global keys into a list, a list to store widget offset values, a scroll controller, and an integer value to indicate which section. Firstly, assign the scroll controller to the single child scroll view widget in the scaffold body. Next, set up an init state function because this animation function should be loaded before the build method runs. Now, to achieve such animation effects, there are two ways to do it, which are a static way and a dynamic way. Static way means we can look at the container widget height value and check if user scroll position surpassed the height value means it entered the next section. The disadvantage of this static way is that the container has to be in fixed size. Any changes to the container height value requires you to update the animation function value as well, else it will work weirdly. In this tutorial, I will show you the dynamic way which reads the container widget's global key value instead of the static height value. The key value assigned to each container represents the container itself rather than a static value. Now let's create the function. Firstly, we need to create a function to get the widget offset through global key. So we have created a list that store all the global keys earlier. Now we can look through each of the key in the list. To get the widget position, firstly we have to get the widget's render object using key.currentContacts.findRenderObject function. This function will return render object so we have to cast it to render box type. Don't forget to add a question mark as the render object could not be found and return null. When we get the render object, we just have to execute local to global function and it will return the offset of the render object which is the offset of the container widget. In the function, pass in offset.0 so that it knows it starts from the top. Now we just need the vertical offset value, so we use target offset dot dy and minus 80. So why do I minus 80 here? This is because in my app bar, I set the toolbar height to 80. So instead of the section reaching to the top of the screen, when it reached to the bottom of the app bar, it will consider as it enter a new section as shown. So you can see that when I scroll just surpass the bottom of the app bar, the section title color should changes immediately. Now for each of the target offset value, we have to add it into the widget offset list that we have created earlier. Now we have finished on the get key offset function. Next, we have to create a function to handle scroll listener. Firstly, we have to get the current user scroll position using scroll controller dot position dot pixel. Once I got the user current scroll position, I can now check and compare with the widget offset list target value. If the scroll position is greater than the second value in the widget offset, at the same time smaller than the third value in the widget offset list, 
it means the user currently in the second section container and I will update the current index to 1. Else, if the scroll position is greater than the third value in the widget offset list, it means user is in the third container. I will update the current index to 2. Else, in any other condition, I will change the current index back to 0. Now we have completed the onScroll function. It's time to add this function in initState method. So, as I mentioned earlier, we are required to run the function in initState, but how do Flutter compiler know the render object details before build method is run? So, to handle this, we have to call the function inside widgets binding dot instance dot post frame callback. We don't need the timestamp, so I will replace with underscore. Inside this function, firstly we have to run the get global key offset function. Then we have to add a listener to the scroll controller. And inside the listener function, add the on scroll function. So the get global key offset function will only be called once, while the on scroll function will be executed as long as there are changes in the scroll controller position. Lastly, in the scaffold action widget, I will add a check on each title text color so that when it reaches to the current index, it will change the text color responsively. Now let's try it out in Chrome. So by default, the current index is 0, so section 1 text is in red color. When I scroll up and surpass section 1 into section 2, section 2 text changes to red and section 1 text changes back to black. Same goes for section 3. So the benefits of using this dynamic way is that, for example, let me change the height value for section 1 to 1200. So as you can see, the animation still works perfectly because the get global key offset will automatically recalculate the height of the section. Conclusion, this is how you create responsive effect in Flutter web using scroll controller and global key. If you have any question, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next tutorial.